G'day, I'm Angry Anderson. Motor oils can be a highly contentious and debated topic. So I'm gonna go to the source. I'm gonna go and talk to a scientist. I'm gonna ask him questions, he'll give you the answers. We're gonna meet this bloke called Tasso. He's a petroleum chemist, so he deals in petrol and oil. So he's gonna, he's an expert, in other words, he's a boffin. He'll have the answers to the questions that you and I will ask. So Tasso, mate, these numbers on a bottle of oil, what do they mean? I mean, what are they telling us? Okay, the two numbers that you'll see is typically these sort of numbers that you see on the bottles. Many years ago, you had uh, two types of oil, a winter grade oil and a summer grade oil. Since then, they've made multi-grade oils. And the first oil to come out with multi-grade was known as an all seasons oil. So when you see a 15W40 or 10W30, Typically the first part of the number, the 15W, would relate to the winter grade. The 40, 30 or 50 uh, will relate to the summer grade oil. And basically the SAE is Society of Automotive Engineers who came up with this uh, grading system. Here's another one Tasso, viscosity index. What does that mean? Okay, viscosity index tells us um, how the oil um, viscosity changes with temperature. So typically what we would like to see is a flat uh, line that tells us that no matter what the temperature is, the viscosity stays the same. Okay? Monograids typically drop off quite quickly in their viscosity as the temperature increases. So they typically have a viscosity index of approximately 100. The, v the VIs with higher viscosity index have a flatter curve. So the higher the viscosity index, the better it is because it means that it has a more stable viscosity over a wider temperature range. Tasso, why should I, or anyone, change their engine oil? Good question, Angry. The reason why you should change your oils is because you have byproducts and contaminants and additive depletion. So the oil itself is meant to do a job and as it does its job, it, the additives etc get used up. So actually, what is the typical composition of an engine oil? Typically you have your base stock, then they'll add anti-wear additives, dispersants to keep all the byproducts and contaminants in suspension, detergents to keep the engine clean, VI improvers to keep the viscosities where they should be and a whole bunch of other additives such as uh, corrosion etc. So you mentioned um, you know additive packages so is it necessary to add these aftermarket packages to your oil? Okay typically they are not required uh, when the engineers of the uh, engine manufacturers design the engine they also design it with a oil in mind which they would specify the oil companies will then make that oil to those specifications and everything that the oil needs should have it according to these additives. If you are needing to add uh, aftermarket additives, you're only masking a problem rather than resolving the cause. So I've heard a bit of debate about mineral and synthetic oils, so can you explain what the difference is between the two? Okay, the difference between the mineral oils and the synthetic oils, it comes down to their base stock. So typically your mineral oils will be base stock uh, from groups 1 and 2, and your synthetic oils will typically be from 3, 4 or 5 uh, group. Other than that, the additive package that they add to it is according to their specifications. So is synthetic and mineral oil, are they compatible? I mean, can you mix the two together? Okay, the safest would be no, you shouldn't mix uh, synthetic with mineral, but I would recommend that if you needed to go down that track, that you consult the oil companies in compatibility of the products. So a synthetic oil, can that be used to run in an engine? Generally no, you must use a, uh, and preferably to use a mineral oil. The synthetic oils have uh, too much anti-wear additives, um, and won't let the engine bed in correctly. Um, the, you know, like, you know the term sludge. What is sludge um, and what causes it? Sludge is basically byproducts and contaminants from combustion and oil byproducts. And what causes sludge? 
Well, that means that um, those uh, byproducts are not held yeah, in suspension. So as we mentioned about the additives of uh, dispersants, um, the additive may be depleted. Back in the old days, we used to pull out the dipstick and we see clean oil, and we thought that was great. But all the soot and byproducts will be forming on the bottom of the plant. Now what we're seeing is darker oils, more soot, because the dispersants are holding those byproducts in suspension, keeping your engine clean and no sludge. So why should I use the viscosity grade engine oil that the manufacturer recommends? That is very important. The vehicle manufacturer would always specify an oil that meets their engines and they will always give you a option of different viscosity grades uh, depending on where you live. For example, if you're in the Simpson Desert, you'd use one type of oil that they recommend. If you're in the Antarctic, they will recommend a, a thinner oil. What you must also be aware is that you meet that their API specification of the manufacturer. So in this case, if they specify an SL uh, API, then it, you must use an SL or better, like an SM, but you can't go backwards to an SG. The S stands for spark ignition, and the uh, second letter, the higher the letter goes up, the higher the specification. Same thing with diesels. If the diesel manufacturer uses a C, uh, recommends a CH4, you can use that as well as a CI, but you can't go back to a CG4. Thanks Tasso mate, thanks for all that information. But if you have any further inquiries about the use of motor oil, visit our website, follow us on Facebook. Good motoring.